There are three main ecosystem services that coral reefs provide. Shoreline protection is a huge one. The others are fisheries benefit and then the tourism and aesthetic value. The reef can only protect the shoreline if it's living. So uh, if it's a dead reef, it will crumble up and get beaten up by the wave action and does not afford any protection at all. Likewise, you begin to lose biodiversity when your reefs die, so you won't have the same amount of fish and critters that are on your reef, so it, it's huge. The ocean is our, our livelihood, pretty much. I'm from Placencia myself. My dad was a fisherman. I've been a tour guide for almost 13 years. I've been coming to the ocean since I was born. It brings back a daily bread to everyone's table. Everybody's either a fisherman, a tour guide, or a dive master. So basically, we use the ocean to survive from. Laughing Bird Key National Park is unique because it's the local community that lobbied to have it protected in the early 90s. So it wasn't as if outsiders came in, it was the Placencia community. What Fragments of Hope does is intervention, so we're actively selecting the stronger corals, growing them up and, and putting them back on the reef. So it's, a, it's active restoration practices. The impetus for the work at Laughing Bird began specifically after Hurricane Iris, which was a Category 4 hurricane. We all thought this key was quote-unquote dead. Everyone thought that Lisa was a little nuts for wanting to plant corals. As we started working, it was actually the fishermen that gave us the most support because they could see that these corals naturally fragment asexually. These are the fastest growing corals really in the Caribbean, the main ones that we work with. All of a sudden, everyone wanted to know um, what growth methods we were using. So we had buy-in immediately as soon as people started seeing that, yeah, it could work. In 2013, we registered Fragments of Hope as a community-based not-for-profit organization. So it has a local board with Placencia community members. We've trained over 60 Belizeans to date so far. We have now shown our corals to be sexually reproductive on their own, and we've been able to document that and document that they're viable, that they can make baby corals, which is the whole point. We're just sort of reseeding nature, giving nature a boost. Other success indicators can be longevity, resiliency. Many of the corals you saw today are not bleaching, whilst others are. That's huge. And the community involvement. When the tour guides are personally involved in planting, they therefore, when they take out the tourists, they can educate them and spread the word. I saw Farmers of Hope at my school. I kind of feel good that people actually care about the environment to try to help it and things, so that future generations can love it. It actually blew my mind away to actually plant coral. It attracts juvenile fishes, crits like crabs and lobsters and stuff like that. If we're going to continue to want to see these things, we want to protect and grow them back. It's crucial to deal with the people on the ground, although I have a lot of experience and knowledge here. We always say the tour guides and um, fishers are the eyes out there. They see something different, or even with the nursery work, oh, this nursery looks good, or oh, this one needs repair. Um, so they're out in the water all the time. They have that practical experience. We are working closely with the fisheries department to generate a national restoration plan. There's a lot of major conservation decisions that have been made at the higher level. I think we could do a lot more to provide higher education for the people that live here. For other countries as well, look into training those people and getting them the, the skill sets that they need. Yes, it's a job for us, but that love we have for what we do is not just, just a job. My tour guide teacher told me none of this would be existing after 20, 25 years. All of that encouraged me to get on this team because I know this is what the future has to hold and if I want my, my child, my grandchild coming up behind me to enjoy what I enjoy all my life, I have to continue to do what I'm doing. <laughs>